What is the best battery chemistry for your potential electric vehicle or your power wall? Between lithium, phosphate, manganese, cobalt and nickel, what are the differences if there are any? And do these differences matter? Well, in this video, I'm going to be explaining the pros and cons of all the different battery chemistries so you can decide what is the most appropriate style chemistry for your needs. So the four types of lithium batteries that I want to be discussing today are LMO, LCO, NMC, and LFP. And yes, I'm aware of the existence of solid state uh, sodium ion, zinc air, aluminium, graphene, and lithium air, and tin carbon. But this stuff is still in the labs, and it's not really available in the market yet for mass consumption. And so I'm purely talking about the types of battery chemistries that are available for us as consumers to buy. And so out of the four battery chemistries, I'll, I'll start with LMO, which stands for lithium manganese oxide. And you'll commonly find this chemistry makeup in, in your batteries for your power tools. And the reason being for this is that the manganese oxide is a material that basically increases the amount of charge cycles or the amount of reliability uh, that a battery will have. But let's just say that instead of putting manganese oxide into the positive terminal, we were to put in cobalt oxide instead. In this instance, you'll have a bit less reliability and the battery won't last as long, but the upside though is that you'll be really maximizing the amount of energy that is stored uh, per kilogram that the battery weighs. And so this is why it is ideal for devices such as your mobile phone, your, your tablet, and basically any, anything where weight matters. And so just as a real world example between these two varying types of chemistries, have you noticed that your power tool batteries seem to last forever, uh, whereas your smartphone batteries seem to be very light, but they only last a few years. Uh, that is because they've made these different choices for their battery chemistries uh, based on their pros and cons. And so, is there a way that you can combine the best of both worlds? Well, yes, and that brings us to our third type of battery chemistry, and that is NMC, or Nickel, Manganese and Cobalt. And so with this, you basically get the best of both worlds, where the Cobalt makes it lightweight, and the Manganese Oxide enables it to do more charge cycles and to make it a bit more durable. However, the obvious downside with this though is that the battery is going to be a lot more expensive. And so where would you commonly find this type of battery chemistry? Pre-2024, you pretty much find this in pretty much every electric car and also every hybrid car that you find on the roads. And not to mention, it is starting to creep its way into many smart devices as well. And as far as the exact ratio of cobalt and the exact ratio of manganese and the exact ratio of nickel and how refined the nickel is, that is unfortunately a bit of a secret source. And now for the last battery out of the four batteries that I want to talk about, and that is an LFP battery or lithium ion phosphate. And although this is primarily a lithium battery, it doesn't seem to fall under the umbrella of the other three as far as umbrella terminology. And so the shortened name for this is just lithium ion phosphate or LFP. And it is the newest chemistry out of all these ones that has hit the market. And you'll commonly find this in pretty much every Chinese made electric vehicle and you'll find it in many western made electric vehicles in the coming years and you'll probably find it in many power walls that are coming into our suburbs pretty soon as well. And, and, and now I'll move on to the performance statistics on how these batteries perform. And just to keep things very simple, uh, because I've already established that lithium cobalt oxide and lithium manganese oxide, uh, not as good as NMC, I'm basically just going to make this lithium ion NMC versus lithium ion phosphate. Alright, so now the first metric in which we'll compare these batteries to each other, and that is the amount of energy that you can fit in per kilogram of battery. Or as the way that it is officially measured, it is watt hours per kilogram. And so in this category, NMC gets the win, where it can store between 150 to 200 watt hours per kilogram. And now just for context of uh, what a normal battery would be, uh, just so you can see how advanced this battery technology is, a uh, lead acid battery can, for can store about 40, and an alkaline battery can store about 85. Now, what about lithium phosphate? Well, that can store 120. So obviously not as good as NMC, but still much better than the old battery chemistries. Now, let's move on to the next metric, and that is how fast can it safely charge and discharge? For nickel, manganese, cobalt, it's, it gets a score of 1C. And so what does 1C mean? That means that it can completely charge or discharge safely within one hour. Now for lithium phosphate, it scored 25C. And so in English, that means that the battery can completely charge or discharge in 2.5 minutes. And so NMC will take an hour to charge or discharge, 
and lithium phosphate would take 2.5 minutes to completely charge or discharge if you really push the battery to the limit. And so lithium ion phosphate gets this win. And now for a third category, and that is the longevity or how long can the battery live before it loses some of its capacity. And the way this, uh, this loss of capacity is measured is that when the battery is fallen below 80% of it, it is considered to have lost its original capacity. Now for nickel, manganese and cobalt, uh, they can last between 500 to 3000 cycles, whereas lithium phosphate can last between 1000 to 10,000 cycles. And so LFP gets the win for this category as well. All right, anyway, now I'll move on to the last test and that is how long can a battery hold its state of charge uh, before it starts leaking the amount of charge that it has. And so for nickel manganese cobalt, it can hold its state of charge for 300 days before losing it. However, lithium phosphate can hold for 350. So lithium phosphate has the win here too, but only just. So now we'll move on to part three of this video, and that is just other interesting things to know about these batteries that can't really be quantified into numbers. First, I'll start with the fire risk. If you're nervous about the battery starting a fire, well then you definitely want to go with lithium phosphate. The materials that are in lithium phosphate battery cannot become hot enough to trigger a thermal runaway. Now, as for nickel, manganese, and cobalt, uh, the results of either a, a penetrative collision is pretty much, uh, well, you've seen the worst of it on the internet with all the anti-electric vehicle forums. And so, if fire is a concern to you, go lithium phosphate. And as a very, 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 very distant second, uh, lithium manganese would be the second best choice because the manganese is not as uh, flammable as uh, uh, NMC or LCO. And then next in that pecking order will be LCO and then there'll be NMC. So that's fire. But what about where the materials come from? Well, lithium, phosphate, graphite and manganese oxide are in an extreme abundant supply on the planet Earth. It's basically everywhere. And as for nickel, it is also very abundant However, it does require a very intense refining process. But out of, out of that list of materials that I just provided, you probably noticed that I left out cobalt. And cobalt is very hard to obtain. 70% of the world's supply of cobalt comes from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And there are legitimate ethical concerns as far as the mining practices used to obtain this resource. Put it bluntly, it's very hard to know whether slavery was used in the process to put cobalt into the battery and that includes on the device that you're watching this video on now. And so what makes uh, nickel manganese batteries so expensive is, is cobalt scarcity and also a little bit of the refining costs of nickel as well. And so what about lithium ion phosphate? Well, lithium ion phosphate does not need any cobalt at all and so it completely solves that issue. And it does also doesn't need any refined nickel, which also incredibly reduces the cost of this battery. Alrighty, so now we'll move on to the last part of this video where I'll give my overall summary. And so for lithium ion NMC, the upside is a higher energy density per kilogram. So it's great for things that move or that you have to carry. But the downside is a fire risk and the potential unethical sourcing of cobalt. And it is much higher in cost because of both the cobalt and also the need to refine the nickel that is in the battery as well. For lithium phosphate, the downside is, is less energy per kilogram, but it is cheaper, it is safer, and it can perform more charge cycles. And so lithium ion phosphate is the obvious choice uh, for most use cases like house batteries and moderate range electric cars. But for NMC and LCO, There'll always be a home for this and applications where you really want to be minimizing the amount of weight uh, for the amount of energy that you're storing. And so this will be in things like laptops, phones, and super, super long range electric cars. Anyway, I really hope this answered your questions about the differences between the types of batteries chemistry.